Raising Arizona is one I picked up on DVD for like a buck a little while ago. Then I got to upgrade it to Blu-ray for like a buck. You gotta love when that happens, right? You gotta love it when you pick up something cheap so you can finally watch it and then you found the better version of it for the same price. I'll, I'll take it. I'm a huge fan of the Coen brothers, but I haven't seen all their films yet, especially when it comes to with like having Nick Cage in the lead. I'm not sure what I was doing waiting this long to check this one out. Well, after posting on Instagram about finally watching the film, my mom commented that apparently I watched this one as a kid, but I, like I have zero memory of this. So it's completely fresh to me. I think what she meant was she watched the film and then I play with NASCARs or wrestling figures in the background. <laughs> The film is written by the Coen brothers, but I think the film is directed by only one of them. Joel got credited for it. I'm not sure. I guess like there used to be like, you're not allowed to share directing credits due to something with the guild or something silly like that. So I'm not entirely sure if the film was only directed by Joel or if it was both Coens, but either way, the film stars Nicolas Cage as high or H I a career criminal who falls in love with the booking officer played by Holly Hunter. Well, the two end up married and high takes a plant job when they find out that Ed or Holly Hunter's character is barren, their relationship falls until they see a wealthy furniture salesman and his wife have quintuplets stating in the paper that they're a handful. The couple plots to kidnap one of the children when they do a bounty hunter shows up and a couple of old convict friends of H.I. or High shows up as well. First off, this film is absolutely hilarious. This might be one of the Coen's funniest movies as it's a pretty straightforward comedy in my opinion. Cage gives an excellent performance but so does Holly Hunter. Really the entire cast is awesome. Cage though just brings the exact presence to sell H.I. or High as a character. It's kind of funny that you kind of want the kidnappers to like have the kid in a weird way. There's a scene where Cage goes to get diapers. That might be one of my favorite scenes in the entire film. It is absolutely hilarious. I don't know because now I'm thinking about the gas station scene with John Goodman's character and William Forth Forsyth's. That's too many that's too many, like, my trouble, my trouble letters in one name. William Forsyth's. That's, <laughs> I really, <laughs> you're screwing up my lisp here, man. That, that scene was outstanding as well. That's what I'm getting at. That was also a really good scene. Honestly, there's a ton of good scenes throughout this film. While the characters that sometimes can be somewhat cartoonish, there's certain levels of complexity to them that makes them such a fascinating watch. High is somewhat of a hopeless romantic that has the urge to rob. It's almost like this compulsion is kind of what gives him life, but he's also caring about people's safety while also being kind of violently protective. Every character might not be completely believable in our world as real characters, but they totally fit in in this world. The bounty hunter has this era of mystique and evil, but also can be metaphorical to High's inner self and a manifestation of his guilt and punishment. It's not exactly like a closed book, but at moments are open to interpretations, which can honestly drive some of the comedy elements up. The film is just 94 minutes, but I swear it only lasted like 30 minutes. This might be some of the quickest pacing I've ever felt in a movie as it just blew by. There are a lot of things happening in its runtime and nothing feels rushed and nothing feels like it lingers either. Everything is here, everything builds off of the other scenes, and there's almost always a payoff. The music has a nice soundtrack to it and visually the film looks pretty solid as well. This is one of those movies that I can definitely see myself putting on looking for something lighthearted and goofy. And for now, I'm going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10. It's a film that could go up on a second viewing. I'm doubtful it will go down. I'm pretty confident it'll probably stay around an eight and a half. It's really good and I'm glad I finally watched this one. I loved it and I would definitely recommend checking this one out.